I am super duper excited that we're at Comic-Con because uh, to me it's just like popular culture. It is, that is it, man. The fact that, you know, we're in, invited to participate is a, is, a, is a big deal because it means we're part of popular culture and uh, if we have made the grade to be a part of it, then that's awesome. That means that we're, we're succeeding at making people happy with the game and that's totally our goal. It's huge. Going to panels and listening to people talk and stuff like that, it's gonna be really uh, cool to be like on the other side and finding out that there's, there's enough people out there that really see Infamous as like this comic book come to life. I think when we were doing the original Infamous, we. We knew we were doing superhero, but I don't think we wanted to do it in kind of super traditional superhero way. Like the first thing we'd have to tell people is, no, he doesn't wear tights or anything like that. It's like, what if it's a regular person who would get superpowers? It fit more into some of the kind of postmodern stuff, the feel of a modern city at under in crisis, kind of the dystopian books that had been out in the last 10 years, some really, really great stuff. The most direct influences on Infamous don't come from the comics I read growing up, it's from all the media that um, was influenced by those comics, those kind of second generation stuff. So Batman movies, especially the recent Batman movies, have been um, a, a big influence for us because they have that sort of spirit of comics in them, but it's filtered through a modern, you know, up-to-day gestalt. You know, the city feels realistic, the characters are flawed. You know, I don't think we wanted to just say, well, here's this comic, let's just go make it um, and just change the character. You know, I don't think that that would have been a huge failure for us. So this is an honorable treatment of a comic hero. But with a hero that was really designed to make sense and be really fun in the context of a game, a game where you did have choices, important choices, which we always felt were part of becoming a superhero. Infamous was the first game we'd really made where we were making a game for ourselves in some sense. We have so many comic fans here. It was fun to make a game where you were really trying to do a game that people like you would enjoy. For me, it was uh, escapism. Yeah, I, I grew up in a real small town. It was really tough to get this sense of bigness. Before I got into comics, I was into, you know, Bionic Man and Evil Knievel. There's something out there that you could you could turn it on and you kind of like have that level of escape. And like with comic books, it was definitely that. Uh, all the artists from the studio, we actually make a comic called uh, Atomic Lead. Uh, kind of quit comic for a while, but then kind of got the itch and I kind of started doing my own comic again. and you know, print up stuff and uh, Xerox, you know, fold it in half, staple it myself, take it to local comic convention. I think it definitely helps to have that love for that medium. And then you can kind of take that and, and apply what works and kind of discard the stuff that doesn't work. If you go back to the 1950s Spider-Man when he first started, the stuff is so ridiculous. He's having conversations with, with his enemies as he's fighting them, like between punches. Now, what I'm about to do to you is, and he's wearing underwear, you know, like this crazy. The powers are kind of the, the element that's still similar to comic books, but then we're trying to marry that with a realistic environment and an art style that makes it more believable to people who aren't necessarily huge comic book fans. But if you go too real, then some of the stuff that we're trying to do, you know, a guy having electricity powers and crazy supervillains, you know, then that doesn't work anymore. So you want to be in that space where that's believable. Real characters that have real problems, Peter Parker has to make rent. Bruce Banner has to actually deal with being a fugitive. And Tony Stark, you know, he's, a, he's an alcoholic, and that's the type of character that, you know, Cole is. We feel that people just related to him on a level that even we didn't expect. I think that the kind of the history of 
video games made out of existing heroes was one of the reasons we decided to go with an original IP. They've had a mixed bag. It has a whole bunch of expectations and limitations that have been built into its universe. You know, you take Superman as an example. The guy has unlimited power. I mean, if you're going to build it out of that character, it's like, well, kryptonite harms him. But otherwise, what is he not going to do, you know? It's very difficult to make a video game where that's really fun. Video games suck at that. They, they, they only succeed if they bind you into space, play space. In Infamous 2, you just basically have the expectations of staying true to the characters that you, know, you originally created. So you get to capture a lot of that rawness that you don't get when you're trying to stay true to an existing established character. You know? But here we get to just you know, create what we want, which is awesome. But to really improve and get to the, kind of the next level, be willing to throw away your old stuff and start over. There was a lot of splatter work done in the first one. I mean, literally every page was just a big wet splatter everywhere. And I felt that, that worked really well in an urban city. In Umurai, it just didn't seem like it would make as much sense, you know? I kind of wanted to capture a little bit more of what this New Orleans-ish kind of city would look like. So just kind of removing a lot of the wet splatters and going more for a watercolor look as opposed to uh, more traditional uh, comic book coloring. I've seen some graphic, you know, you know cutscenes where, you know, when somebody hit them, it's like kapow, and you see the word kapow. The direct reference with the, the border or the panels uh, and the word balloons and stuff, it's really an element of the printed medium. Some of those things doesn't really apply. This is an evolution of, you know, taking something that printed and now seeing it, you know, in motion and with sound. Like all art form, is always evolving, which is really exciting. Super, super exciting to be, you know, at that edge. And the, what we're doing is not a comic book, nor is it a straight, full-on, you know, animated piece. It's actually somewhere in between, and we're trying to carve that little niche. There's an experience that everybody wants to have, which is to be a superhero. If we can make a game that lets you be that superhero, and, and own that, that experience, that's really my objective. And I think we are probably still the underdog, you know, of the whole thing. Uh, Marvel and DC and Batman, Sp uh, Spider-Man, all those guys have years and years of history of kind of ingrained into um, the, the modern culture. Um, so we're just trying to, you know, put our notch on it.